Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Cutting Dixons on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five. That's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's the C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get Yeah. One of the biggest things we picked up when we picked up the Thrive 15 team was an entire team. You want an SEO guy that knows things about search engine optimization? Got it. You got a, a website guy that's built big websites like Garth Brooks' website? Awesome, we have it, he's coming in. If I had to pay for that on my own, outside of Thrive 15, there's just no way. For us, one of our most immediate needs when I got connected with Clay was technology. We we had a website, but I had a website in Tulsa, our other partner had a website in Colorado. And they did everything from doing a drone video where they flew over all of our markets with a drone, they integrated that into our site, they built every single thing that I think of, they do. We do a podcast. If I was going to produce my own podcast, there's no, I mean, that alone, just that alone would be what I pay Thrive, just for that. But then if you add the fact that I've got, if I need a business card design, if I need a website build, if I need this, if I need that, I know what I would pay for that if I had to go a la carte. I feel guilty sometimes, like I don't, I don't probably write a big enough check for the value that I get. I think there's a lot of entrepreneurs that have ideas of what they want to do with their business and how they want to grow and what market they want to be in and how they can increase production and do all this. But it's not about having 4,000 ideas. It's about having 12 and executing them 4,000 times. That's the trick, in my opinion. And that's where Thrive's value comes in. I feel like I have my own staff, my own, like, I don't know, 20-person team that when I need something, I just go to them and it happens. I'm going to beat all of their competitors' prices for I'll give you the mattress for free. How's that sound? You look good. Let's sell some mattresses. Sales for me, you know, it's what makes the world go round. Um, and it's my life. You know, when I step out onto this showroom floor, it's my time to shine. It's my time to nominate. This is my coliseum, and I'm the gladiator. So, look out. Hey! Oh. <laughs> Cameron Hi. Coates, nice Hi. to meet you. Mary. I'll be taking care of today. Mary? Yes. What Hi. a great name. That's beautiful. And you are such a vision. Oh, Mwah. okay. Oh, Mary, what do I got to do to get you into bed today? <laughs> uh. You know, really, I just want to serve the people. I want to use my knowledge to better mankind. This is 100% memory from Mattress, okay, with a circle knit top. It comes from our King Arthur collection, and we call it Excalibur. <laughs> Hop on up, Mary. Oh, no, that's not necessary. A lot of these guys out there, they're dishonest, you know? But I believe in truth in sales. Uh, this is a limited edition, which means it's a collector's item, which means that it will appreciate in value. So really think of this mattress as an investment into your financial future. I just love making people smile, you know? If at the end of the day, I've made at least one customer smile, then I've done my job, I've succeeded. I need them to buy something as well, of course, um, because they don't pay me for smiles but um, I would be rich if they did. All right, Thrive Nation, on today's show, we're going to do two success stories on part one of today's show. We're going to interview a longtime client who has successfully scaled his business and is now franchise, fr franchising his business. He's now allowing other entrepreneurs, allowing other entrepreneurs to go out there and to purchase the right to use his proven business model. The company's called Window Ninjas. Now, in part two of today's show, we're going to tell you about a longtime client by the name of Tim Redmond. We helped Tim Redmond to grow his business from approximately, in his words, five to 20 clients up to hundreds of clients in the consulting space. And I'm very excited to introduce you to uh, guest number one, Gabe Salinas with Window Ninjas. How are you, sir? I'm great, Clay. Thanks for having me today. So I got to ask you this, uh, when you and I first met, uh, this would be you know, getting close to four years ago, um, you had started this company, windowedninjas.com, windowedninjas.com. What was your vision for the brand at that point? Well, my vision was to provide our services in a remarkable way. I wanted customers to really say, wow, when our guys showed up and provided the service to them 
Um, I wanted the customer service experience to be delivered in a way that was very unique and beneficial to the client. And uh, that was that was our vision. It was all about service at, at the highest level. And one of the things I've discovered is you uh, weren't emotional about it. You were ready to put in action. And that's one great thing that was phenomenal to work with you on. And, and as we share on part two of today's show about the Tim Redmond success story, uh, different businesses, but the same process. So I want to go through these processes line by line and really get your thoughts on why they're important. And again, folks, knowing that Gabe has already gone through the process of scaling his business should give you some comfort when going to windowninjas.com to learn more about buying a franchise because he's already put in the tough work to go down this process. So first off, uh, step one, you, you had to figure out your revenue goals and uh, your your weekly gross revenue goals. You had to figure out, you know, your goals to hit your goal, what kind of revenue you had to produce to hit your goals. Can you share why it's very important for every business owner to know what their gross revenue goals are for both, for not only the year, but for the for the actual week? Well, you got to think of it like a road. I mean, it, it's your highway to success. If you don't know where you're going, you're never going to know where you where you are or end up. So, revenue goals are. I I, can, I look at revenue goals as um, in two ways. How challenging are they, um, and are they challenging enough uh, to be achievable? And so we set these goals up at the at the end of each fiscal year, um, mm -hmm. so that we know going out, getting out of December into January, exactly how much revenue we need to hit in each location in January. And then every single month, we know which then correlates. Going back to what you said, it correlates with um, knowing how much we need to do every week, which then goes back to how much we need to do every day. And because we run multiple trucks in all of our different locations. Um, then we know exactly how much each truck needs to book, which then goes down into helping our call center understand how much we need to book per hour per truck based on the man, the men on the truck. So all of these the revenue goals are good goals, but they also help other portions of the business and allows you to stay on track. That way, at the end of the year, you know exactly where you needed to be and if you attained that goal or not. Now, if I'm speaking in a turn, please correct me. But I think when you and I first met, I mean, you had a very clear vision of where you wanted to go. You just needed some systems in place to get there. I feel like you already had that clear vision. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I, I knew what I wanted. I knew what I want the business to look like. Um, I knew I didn't want it to be average and ordinary. And because um, there's way too much of that. I think you and I can both agree that there's way too much average and ordinary out there in the world today. Um, and I, I just wanted it to be great. I wanted it to be exceptional. I wanted it to be extraordinary. Just same thing with our customer service experience. I just wanted it to be extraordinary. And I wanted to surround myself around people that had the same vision, which we've done. We've had a good job. We've done a good job of doing that. Now, your business now, I mean, you guys have how many locations do you have now? Uh, we're operating eight, uh, 11 locations throughout four states. It's unbelievable. It's great to see it happen. Now, box three, uh, figure out how many hours per week you're willing to work. Now, I know something that you have mentioned to me uh, uh, offline, uh, you know, fitness is a big thing for you. Family time is a great thing for you. And you are an important thing for you. You've brought, you blocked out time for fitness and family time despite growing a business. Why is that important for everybody listening out there right now to really look at box three and figure out what are your boundaries for your schedule and how many hours per week you are willing to work? Number three is super important. It's something that me and you talk about all the time, but I also talk about it to our potential franchisees. Man, if if you schedule your week based on the things that are important to you, family, faith, fun, whatever they may be, then you are in control of your time freedom. I consider that to be time freedom, right? If I'm going to work on my business, if I'm going to work within Window Ninjas, and I say that I'm going to work on it 10 hours a day, Monday through Friday, and five hours on Saturday, okay, great, man. That's what I'm going to do. It's 55 hours a week, but there's, you, you know, there's 24 hours in a day, and there's a lot of hours in the week, so... Then I can call, and then I can assign time to have some fun time. I can assign time each day to have some family time. I can have some. I can assign time every single day to have fitness. For example, I got up this morning. I, I don't know. I think I was up by up and out by six, and um, out the door, meaning out the door by six. And I went for a planned one hour run. You know, I was going to go do a little more than six, seven miles, and that's what I did. And I had that time to focus on that specific task. And when I was finished with that, and then it goes on to to business. You know, I've got business stuff that I need to do today. So I'm right now I'm I'm working in the business. And it's now, important to do that. 
This is so important. And again, you, you, when you're buying a franchise, you're buying a proven system, which you know our job is to help you refine that system and make it scalable. And on today's show, we're talking about nailing it and scaling it. So again, part one, folks, this is a really nice opportunity for you to lean into windowninjas.com, a great opportunity for you to franchise a proven system. Part two of today's show, it's the Redmond growth story. It's, it's not a, a scalable business where you can participate in it. You can't franchise it. You can't license it. But on part one of today's show, this is something you could actively participate in. Now, defining your unique unique value proposition. I'm going to pull in your website here to put a little bit of meat on the bone here um, so people can see this because a lot of times it can be kind of abstract when you tell somebody, hey, I, we need to make a unique value proposition. We start with the name, Window Ninjas. Uh, the name is unique. We start with the branding. Um, we've worked together on this over the last few years to really make the branding refined. Um, you guys are the highest rated and most reviewed um, window cleaning expert in your region. Um, you've got a clearly a polished brand. The brand looks sharp. Um, can you share with the listeners, why is it important to nail down your branding box number five and nail down your unique value proposition? Branding is super important because you want people to remember you, whether it's potential clients, your existing clients, your friends, your family, your neighbors, everybody. When you're driving down the road and you see a uh, a brand that you recognize, you automatically can associate certain things with that brand. And with Window Ninjas, we've done a great job of continually marketing and branding our company. And it is now becoming a uh, a common name and a common logo that a lot of people are seeing. And they reflect back and say, wow, what an extraordinary job you have done of branding your company. I get that. And I take that as a compliment. I, I get a lot, of, a lot of remarks like that every single week. Um, and, and with your help, Clay, I mean, you were, you, you guys helped us to do the branding that needed to be done so that we could get comments like that. And again, that word extraordinary is super important because that is what we want our customers to receive is an extraordinary experience. And so between that word extraordinary and the branding that we have done, that you guys have helped me with getting our name and our logo out there, um, it's becoming a brand that people recognize and they associate the word extraordinary with it. So as a business owner, any, any person looking to get into business, whether, whether they're going to get it, get into a franchise business or they're going to try to go out and reinvent the wheel on their own. Um, it's super important to understand that you have to brand your name, your logo, and your, 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 your what you guys are about, because that's where customers come in handy when they're looking for a, a, a company to do business with. They want that value. They want that brand. And mm -hmm. that goes back to your your original question about the value, um, the the value you know, that comp companies do with branding. Now, one thing that uh, you know, most of my clients I work with are not based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Tim Redmond, who's on part two of today's show, happened to be in Tulsa, so we were able to do some stuff for Tim. Like we were able to offer him free office space, which was great. We were able to like actually train his callers, you know. So his actual call center reps were people that came to my group interview. And I train them up myself. They could sit in the staff meetings and listen to my team. There's a lot of things that we were able to do because he was based in Tulsa. Most of our clients are not based in Tulsa. However, working with you uh, remotely, I mean, you guys are implementing everything 90 miles an hour. You really refined your three-legged marketing stool. That's the three ways you go about um, getting customers your three proven ways for marketing. Then when it came into sales scripting, you really leaned into that. Now with, with Tim, um, we actually staffed the callers for him that made the calls, you know? So we actually recruited the callers that made the calls, trained the callers. I mean, it was like they were in my uh, fishbowl, so to speak, and we could really keep an eye on them. In your case, you've had to create your own fishbowl and now you have your own really functional uh, call center. And for anybody who buys a windowninjas.com franchise, you're going to have access to the proven systems and scripts that we have created uh, uh, together that, that Gabe has refined uh, uh, on his own, that Gabe has worked tirelessly improved upon. So you're having access to that proven call center. Whereas with, again, I'm trying to give some contrast here. Whereas on part two of today's show, as we celebrate Tim Redmond's growth, um, you know, you, this is not a business that you could buy. Uh, the, the, the scripts and systems that we created for Tim, those are not systems that you can go out there and say, Hey, I want to franchise that. Hey, I want to do that too. Um, so it's, it's two unique success stories here. So we go back to creating a sales conversion system. 
the scripts, the recorded calls, uh, the pre-written emails. If somebody goes to windowninjas.com to schedule a carpet cleaning, um, your team is going to answer the phone, and the local franchisee does not have to do that. Um, can you talk about why that's valuable for franchisees? Uh, that is one of our biggest unique value propositions at Window Ninjas Franchising. With with a franchise, uh, people that come in and want to buy a Window Ninjas franchise, they get the support from our call center. And it's huge for the amount of money that we charge our franchisees to utilize the call center. All calls come into our center. We facilitate all the customer's needs. We schedule all the jobs. We put it on the franchisee's calendar. The franchisee doesn't have to do anything but but look at their schedule and then just go to work. Uh, if a customer wants an estimate, we can facilitate that need over the phone. If they want a quote, we can facilitate that by setting it up for the franchisee owner or the manager. And we just basically operate by helping the client and helping the client that is the franchisee. Hmm. And for the 8% royal the 8% that we charge for the franchise for the uh call center yeah. it is a deal i mean it is a real deal and uh, because you can't do it on your own for any you know we're near 8% um right. and then the customers enjoy the fact that we are actually following scripts um we're humorous in a nice professional way and um we're facilitating their needs and asking them thorough questions so that their their needs can be uh, met as well now, let's look here at these repeatable systems. You have checklists, processes, uh, documented workflows. Everything needed to become a franchise owner is now documented. So when you send out text to clean the uh, windows, it's all documented. There's proven systems for everything. Um, talk about that. If somebody goes to windowninjas.com and they want to learn about buying a franchise, what kind of systems do you give them access to? Um, it's funny you asked me that because I just had uh, a guy guide- that's looking to buy a franchise. That's the same question he he just asked me. Um, we give you everything, and we give you a person to 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 help you with that portion of the business. So each business is all every business is the same. Clay, you and I talk about it all the time, right? First, you got to start with marketing. Um, marketing turns into sales. Sales then turns into the service work that we do, and then the service work has to be fi- finalized with the accounting, right? So there's basically four portions of that biz of of operations, and so. Step one with marketing, we have a marketing team in, in our house over here at Window Ninjas and, and Clay, your team helps us with some marketing as well. And it allows the franchisee to come in, spend their money with us and our marketing team because we have the proven system that you have helped us build. And we set those ads and we do all of the content mark, mark or content production, video editing, all of that stuff, boom. And then it turns into a sales lead and our sales team on the call center then facilitates that need and closes the deal, which then sets up the service work, which gets done at a gr- in a great manner. Money gets collected and then boom, it goes over to the accounting team. And so as a franchisee, you're getting support from 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 the marketing department, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a person that you have, have uh, can work with when it comes to marketing. On the sales side, we have a sales manager that you can go to, that you can discuss whatever your needs are, questions, concerns, whatever. Maybe you want us to make more phone outbound prospecting calls for you, whatever the case may be. Um, then you have a, a service operations guy that that you you get to work with so that you understand exactly how to do every every bit of the services that we provide. If you have a question, you can go to them. And then on the accounting side. Uh, we have somebody designated for our franchisees that when they have an accounting question, they go to them. And so we provide four people that are experts in every single one of those aspects of the business so that you, the franchisee, can get your questions answered and keep moving and moving at a quick and rapid speed without having to run over any speed bumps. So that's where all all these systems and processes come in handy and all the stuff that Clay's done to help us grow is because we've started at the beginning and then worked our way all the way to the end, which was the accounting. And we just did it as the flow of the business and our franchisees, our, our location um, uh, managers, man, it just makes it really, really, really easy for them to do their job and be successful every day. 
Now, I'm going to point this out for everybody. I'm going to be leaving here in just a few minutes to Denver, Colorado, because at Foxyfresh, we've now uh, sold over 500 locations. And uh, what happens is, is people want a location and we're not available sometimes. People say, I- I'd like to get an Oxyfresh. And we go, oh, sorry, we're booked out in that territory. Oh, sorry, I'm booked out in that territory, too. Oh, sorry, we're booked out in that state. Oh, my bad. We're, we- so um, if you're looking to buy an Oxyfresh franchise, a lot of people are. Uh, we just don't have uh, territories available in certain markets. And so why I have Gabe on this show is that there's really three big reasons. One, I think he's just a, a great guy, uh, the kind of guy that's diligent, kind, hardworking, the way he treats his family, the way he treats his staff. I know that you're teaming up with a good person in Gabe Salinas of WindowNinjas.com. Second is the business model makes a sense. Makes sense. I mean, you could have all the smiles in the world. You could be the nicest guy. But if your business model doesn't work, um, that's not going to be helpful to helping you achieve time freedom and financial freedom. The third is that it's affordable. It's a, it's a franchise that you can buy. And for less money than a lot of people would spend on a year or two of college. I mean, think about this. A lot of people go to college for a year or two uh, to get general education, and they have no practical application once they graduate. Um, so let's get into the brass tacks of it. If someone goes to windowninjas.com, how much money does it cost, Gabe, to open up a windowninjas.com franchise? Well, the, uh, the initial franchise fee is $49,500, so just under fifty k. And then build out of your truck and your equipment and, you know, buying all of your window packages and your pressure washing packages, all of that. You're going to spend anywhere between 85 and 190 K, depending on, you know, like I said, those packages that you choose. And uh, we do offer multi um, multi location territory rights. So some 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 owners choose to buy more than one territory. So that so that kind of falls into that. But yeah, for right around 150 to 175 grand on average, man, you can you can. Open up your own Window Ninjas franchise. You can make that money back quickly. Uh, we're showing anywhere from twenty to thirty percent profit uh, with our existing locations, and um, you can put some good good money in your pocket and and achieve the two things that we want all of our franchisees to achieve, and that is time freedom and financial freedom, and have fun doing it. Amen to that. Now, Gabe, a final question. I'll let you go there, sir. Um, who's a good fit and who's not a good fit for a windowninjas.com franchise? Again, again, window windowninjas.com franchise. A good fit would be somebody that's looking for the best opportunity. Somebody that's a go-getter, a thriver, um, wants to create time, freedom, and financial freedom for themselves. I say that a lot, but I do mean it. Time, freedom, financial freedom, those two things go hand in hand. Great attitude. You gotta have a great attitude. Um, somebody that wouldn't be a, a good fit for Window Ninjas is um, maybe a socialist. Uh, <laughs> maybe somebody with a bad attitude. Um, maybe uh, maybe somebody that um, you know is homeless and uh, lives at the beach on the beach. You know, maybe, maybe doesn't own shoes. Or flip flops every day, maybe. I don't know. That, Those that intentional was, homeless was... <laughs> people are an interesting group there. And what state are you based in? Like right now, when you're doing the interview or when you're running your locations, where are you based? I'm in the wonderful city of Wilmington and the state of North Carolina. So Wilmington, North Carolina is my home. It's where I live. It's where our call center is. It's where our corporate office is. And uh, man, it's a great place. It's it's not nice here. It's sunny. It's about 70 degrees. And um, it's 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 it was it's a wonderful day today here in Wilmington. Hey, thank you so much for your time, brother. We'll talk to you soon. James, on, on part two of today's show, it, it could be said that it's almost like Tim Redmond uh, Celebration Month, uh, almost like a Tim Redmond Celebration Year here at the Thrive Time Show. You know, we have so many clients, James, that we we work with to help them scale and grow their business. On part one of today's show, we interviewed Gabe Salinas of Window Ninjas. He's having massive success, and what a grateful and kind guy he is. We've helped him to grow his business. And on part two of today's show, we're going to share with you what I would call an extreme example of extreme success. This is the Tim Redmond uh, growth success story. And I want people to know this before you hear the success story, because when you're going to hear Tim Redmond tell you about how he doubled his business every year that he worked with us, that's going to seem unbelievable. It's going to seem, I mean, James, it seems unbelievable that someone can double their business every year. It's wild. And you know what? I see it here in the office every day. People come in and their business just takes off like a rocket ship. So I'm going to just share with you about the Tim Redmond story just so that maybe put a little meat on the bones so that people know this is not hyperbole, not some made up story. Okay. So for Tim, uh, to help him uh, uh, go from five to 20 clients, because uh, he, he said he was at five to 20 clients consistently for his consulting company, to help him grow from that to where we doubled every year, there were some things that we did for Tim that we wouldn't do for for most people but we did it for tim because because why james because he's an honest guy who always honors his agreements that's right so we let tim redmond office in our office for free 
Wow. I mean, that's not a normal thing. Okay. Um, we let we actually mentored and taught Tim Redmond's first employees how to become business consultants. That's incredible. I actually let Tim Redmond's son spend every single workday with me nonstop shadowing every single moment of every single day in the, in the office. True. That's amazing. And I actually uh, did the group interview. I conducted the group interview uh, for the Redmond team to help them uh, recruit their initial uh, employees. I actually, every single day, personally mentored their employees and let them shadow my office processes. You know, I actually uh, uh, built all the built the website, the print pieces, the logos, all the marketing pieces, the call scripts. I actually had my team make the calls for Tim Redmond because Tim Redmond didn't have a call team, uh, nor did Tim Redmond have an office that was conducive for recruiting people, so we let him use the office. But we did it for Tim. James, James, why did we do it for Tim Redmond? Because he's an honest guy who always honors his agreement. That's the kind <laughs> of guy he was, and that's what we did. And then we worked with him, and he had tremendous success. So when you hear these success stories, I mean, you just heard about the Window Ninjas six story, uh, success story, and you go, wow. You guys helped this guy triple the size of his company. That's an impressive total. That's that's kind of our normal here at the Thrive Time Show. But when you hear about a guy whose business doubled every year, you might go, what? Yeah, so what we did with Tim is we put together an agreement where every time that, that Tim Redmond would land a new client, he would pay me $750 a month per client to provide the back-end service for his client. So he was able, able to go out there and market his business consulting services without having to hire a photographer, a videographer, a web developer, a search engine developer to rent an office space, to have systems in place. He didn't have to go write books on how to grow businesses. He could just tap into our proven systems and he could kind of stand on the shoulders of giants. He could use our wheel. He didn't have to reinvent the wheel. But James, why did we do it for Tim Redmond where we probably could not and would not offer? I mean, think about that. Offering people free office space, training their initial employees, building their entire business model for them, writing all the call scripts, staffing the call center for them. We, we wouldn't do that for the average person, but we did it for Tim Redmond for two reasons. James, what were those two reasons? Well, he was an honest guy. And he always honors his agreements. That's what, that's what he was. He was an honest guy who always honored his agreements. That's why we did the second reason. Because you know what? Uh, <laughs> Think about it. We're, we're, Money. We were making $750 per new client that he got. Right. And we had a signed agreement. And if you look at the show notes on today's show, you'll be able to read that agreement. I'm sure it's inspiring for you to see the transparency and how the, this agreement was such a win-win a deal, an incredible win-win deal. And so, again, I, you know, we're making we, – we, with the deal we worked out with Tim, we said, Tim, every time you land a new client, you, you just pay us $750 per month, and we'll do the back-end work for you. And then we're going to let you use our systems, our processes, our office space. You can even speak at our in-person workshops. We're going to do all that for you. And, and James, we did that uh, because uh, Tim Redmond – was, was such a great guy. And what we're going to do on t today's show is we're going to let Tim, in, in his own words, uh, share with you about how we helped him to nail and scale his business. I kind of view this as Tim Redmond Appreciation Month. It could, it could be Tim Redmond Appreciation Year. I, I don't know. I just, when I think about the fact, I mean, we have so many success stories of clients that grow, grow by 50% in the first year, but to double every year, it might end up being Tim Redmond Appreciation, Tim Redmond Celebration Year. We'll, we'll see. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. I really do appreciate you. And now, without further ado, here's the Tim Redmond success story. Again, that's Tim, T-I-M, Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D, Tim Redmond, uh, based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is the Tim Redmond business consulting success story. Uh, Tim Redmond, uh, an incredible, uh, incredible uh, living, living legend. And uh, here we go. Tim Redmond, welcome to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? Clay Clark, I am a man that's grateful because of you and for you. Uh, you're you've been an amazing impact in my life. I'll just say that up front. Well, you know, you um, you and I have a unique um, relationship because, um, you know, you were my boss for, for a long time. And then I had the opportunity to, to work with you as a consultant. And we've been able to work back and forth with each oh, other. You've been hugely helpful. It's my life is different because of you. So I want to ask you this. When you meet with business owners today, where do you find that most business owners are stuck? Like when you, when you say you're, you're talking to somebody out there and um, they have an accounting practice, a dental practice, a contracting business, and they're stuck. What are the areas where you see people, most business owners are, where, where are they most uh, predictably stuck? Uh, in the same place that I was stuck 
uh, when I reached out for your help. Um, I did uh, in marketing. I did not have a a process of uh, constant stream of leads coming in. Uh, because of lack of marketing. And then I lacked a sales workflow that once the lead came in, that I could aggressively process it through to get them to come on board so that I could help them out. I didn't have those before I started working with you, Clay, and you helped me out with that. And uh, those are probably two of the most common problems I run into in consulting our clients. You know, one of the things I, I like to do, and I like to explain this to clients, is that you have to view your business as a, a linear workflow, kind of from left to right, like a timeline. Oh, yeah. And so you have to start with fixing your, your branding. And then after you fix your branding, then you want to fix your marketing. And after you fix your marketing, you fix your sales. And then after your sales, you fix your hiring and firing, and then you fix your accounting and you just follow down the path. And, and how often do you find that business owners need help finding good people? Uh, that's never been a challenge for me to find, to, to hire, train and retain good people, especially during um, the, the COVID, during the COVID moments. A lot of people said, well, I can't find yeah. good people now. Yeah. I still have never had a hard time finding people, um, <laughs> but I mean, have you, what, what are your thoughts on that? How often are business owners having, uh, how often are they struggling to find good people? Well, most of who we get is we, we have specialty docs and contractors. We market aggressively to go after a contractor. So that's most of our clients. And that I would say clay, that that is the number one need and one of the biggest reasons they come on board uh, to get our help here is they cannot find decent people that will show up and actually work. Huge problem. Finding good people. Finding good people, keeping good people, uh, getting people that will actually want to work. Yeah, which that could be defined as a good people. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it's a huge problem. And, and I know that with the systems we teach people, you know, they will learn how to hire, inspire, train, and retain great people. And I think people view hiring as like a, a one-time event, but it's really a process. And uh, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, Harley is a young guy that's a member of your team who I've, I've met him. Right. I since his first yeah. day working with you. And uh, he's been a great member <laughs> of your team and a great guy. Uh, but a lot, of, a lot of people I speak with, they say, I, I have a hard time re uh, retaining employees for more than a month or two. If you had to give people tips on how to, hire, inspire, train, and retain good people, what would you say to them? If, they, if anybody there's listening and they're struggling to uh, find and re hire, uh, inspire, train, and retain good people. Yeah. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a number of things here. First of all, uh, you want to create an environment that people are attracted to. So one of the biggest uh, um, requirements or the biggest uh, ways that a leader becomes effective is they, they create an environment. Uh, most people respond and react to an environment, a lot like a seed. Some grows up, you know, the Bible story about some fell away by the, by the side and by the stones and all that. They didn't grow up very big, but those planted in good soil or a good environment, they, you know, they're going to grow and they're going to really produce. So number one, you've got to, you've got to create a good environment for people to join and if it's uh, reactive and people are yelling and it's it's just uh, an ego clash, that's not going to attract decent people. Good people are going to leave and they're going to find another place that's got a better environment. Number two is you've got to be really clear on what you want them to do. And uh, we, we have a lot of clients, Clay, and, and, you know, we've shared many stories together. We've spent many hours together is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of folks here just they they hire people and they just throw them to the dogs and say, hey, just I hope you can figure this out as you go. There's not a training. There's not a clear expectation. And so as a result, they don't know how to win in their job. And there's a lot of people, Clay, that that they're dissatisfied because they don't feel like they're winning in their job and they don't know how to win in their job. Uh, Tim, uh, you know, at, at uh, the business conferences that you and I have done, you've actually appeared at a lot of them and, and you've, you've yeah, oh, yeah. MC and, and speak at them. I think one of the things people have enjoyed about those is um, 
the ability to ask any questions that they want to ask and not to be mocked publicly, but to have somebody that actually yeah. answers their questions. Um, what are common questions that you get asked by clients as a business consultant? Like if you could just think through sort of the, the Rolodex, the mental role Rolodex of, of most frequently asked questions. Well, what do people typically ask you? Cause I know as a consultant, what I get asked a lot, but I want to get your thing. What are, what are the yeah. questions? Okay. You ask you? So th- this is a good question, sir. So, um, most of the time they're either looking for leads, more leads or more how to hire more staff. And so what has happened is they've already gone to two or three or five or seven other marketing firms or hiring firms, and they've been very unsuccessful. And so they come with a lot of frustration and sometimes they're almost like mad at us to say, well, this is what everybody else said. And I say, well, we're not, we're not just a, uh, a coaching company that tells you what to do. We're a do it for you coaching company. And so we're going to do a lot of this stuff and implement it yourself. I mean, I still hire your staff to get our SEO there and, and, and to keep the websites up to date and to get the marketing, uh, digital marketing straightened up. So, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really important to be able to deliver something can you give me enough leads is a big question or how are you going to help me find uh, decent people? Because I've been out there and there's nobody else out there. And I said, well, we, we have a, a host system that we introduce, but unless you apply this system on a consistent basis, it won't work. Casualness causes casualties, you know? And so uh, those are big questions. Another big question is how do I get this business off my back? It just seems like I'm stuck as a slave in my business. So how do I get out of this business here? How do I get it to, when I'm working in the business, I want to work on the business and not just in it. Those are some of the common ones. Now you and your, your wife just celebrated and an, an, celebrated an anniversary, I believe, correct? Yeah. Three, three. 33. 33. 33 years. Yes. The reason why I bring this up is because, you know, my wife and I, we've been married uh, uh, 21 years. And I find that in the world of business, there's a lot of um, business coaching platforms, a lot of consulting platforms that exist. And I'm not going to mention <laughs> the specific names today, but I want to. <laughs> so instead of mentioning them, I'm just going to pull up video clips to show what I'm talking about here. So <laughs> I'm not going to mention them. I'm just going to show examples of them. But they, they, they have these. And this is not you saying this. This is this is me saying this. So what they do is they 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 project a world that doesn't exist. OK, so I'm going to just type this in. And so this would be. Uh, oh, Ty Lopez. Come on. OK, so here we go. So this is uh, this is a lot. Of, I mean, seriously, a lot of people come to me after having been to a workshop that's similar to this one. So this guy's name is Ty Lopez. And Ty Lopez, this is an actual commercial that he's running right now on YouTube. Watch this. You know what I like more than flying in a private jet like this? My books. Actually not, but I do bring books with me. Okay, now I don't know, and, and maybe I have a different world. Maybe I come at the world from a different angle than a lot of people, <laughs> but I've never been in a private jet with a guy like this and a girl like that and a girl like that and a guy like that talking about books, nor have I ever been in a private jet with people like this. But the point is the idea that he's selling, look at this. Because we were just talking a little bit earlier on um, the question was how to figure out what you should do with your life, like your destiny, what you're meant to do, what your purpose is. And I don't know that I want life advice from her or from her or from him or from him. And then you go yes. and, and again, and, and people say, Clay, why are you mentioning him specifically? Because I'm trying to speak to my specific, to your specific potential, ideal and likely buyer. There's only a certain number of clients we can work with at any given time. And I just want to be very clear. So this is another example of what we are not. Let me just hit play here. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. Oh, God. Here in the Hollywood Hills. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Oh, here we go. Knowledge. Oh. In fact, I'm a lot more proud of these seven new bookshelves that I had to get installed to hold 2,000 new books that I bought. It's like the billionaire Warren Buffett says, the more you learn, the more you earn. Now, maybe you've seen my TEDx talk where I talk about how I read a book a day. You know, I read a book a day not to show off. It's, again, about the knowledge. In fact, 
the real reason I keep this Lamborghini here is that it's a reminder, a reminder that dreams are still possible because it wasn't that long ago that I was in a little town across the country. Here we go. Sleeping on a couch a in couch. a mobile home with only $47. $47. That's exactly how many dollars he had. He remembers because he counted how many dollars he had. Yeah. And, and yeah. Ty Lopez, I mean, he's got an unbelievable. He has so many different examples of what he does. This is just Ty Lopez. These are, you know, this is Ty Lopez. He's so a lot of people, when they think of consulting, that's what they think of. And that's yes. not what we do, we work with dentists, doctors, lawyers, contractors to help them grow their business. So if you had to contrast what you do, Tim, as a consultant, um, you know, that I've had the honor of working with for, for uh, oh, basically a decade. Um, oh, I'm how would you describe, to you. Yeah, how would you describe what you do versus that of which Ty Lopez does? Because again, if, if you say business consultant or business coach, immediately people picture Ty Lopez, due to his shameless, shameless uh, jet-based marketing. Well, I I've got some similarities to Ty in that I do have some books. I actually read them, oh. and I I read them next to a super attractive woman, which is my wife. And uh, but that's about as end as as far as it goes. Um, I know I'm not supposed to say bullshitter, but he's the biggest bullshitter on the inter internet. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> And I think you'll have to probably beep that out. But uh, what we do is we we are an outcome focused company, and so we measure our success. You know, the client has to be happy, but we really look at what are the numbers. We have the sales, we got net profit, we have gross profit, gross you know uh, gross profit and cost of goods sold. We have that. We've got how much money you have in the bank account. We actually measure that. We, we count it. And so it, it's the big difference here is can you count and visibly and tangibly see the results of the coaching? And if you can't kick us out and get rid of us and find hire Ty Lopez, <laughs> please don't hire him. Well, and you, and you've been, and you've been married for 33 years. And I mean this because the, I'm not saying that you're, a marriage guru, nor am I saying I'm a marriage guru. What I'm saying, though, is that you really want to look at the fruit of the lives of the people that you're listening to. Because if you look at Ty Lopez and who he's hanging around with and what he's all about, if that's what you want in your life, then maybe you pursue that. But uh, I, I, I call that lifestyle jackassery. It's, it's fake. It's smoke. Jackassery. Didn't you find his address as being in the middle of some cow pasture in england or somewhere <laughs> i did look up the address that he was using at one point led you to an like an abandoned warehouse district there so so Tim, okay. uh, we've got uh, listeners from all over the country that, that tune into this show uh, oh good and, uh, and they they're you know they're always taking notes if you had to give the listeners one final pro tip or one final uh, uh thought before we let you go what would that be what would the, the, that statement be you want to you want to share with the listeners i would say that create a cadence in your business and you do that by having a daily planning that you do. And then every week you touch every aspect of your business, meaning a meeting, an accountability meeting with whoever's in charge of whatever you're looking over. You visit that aspect of the business, like for accounting, that's going to be Monday at one o'clock. For sales, that's going to be Tuesday and Thursday and Friday. For you know, we have specific times where we touch every aspect of our business, and so creating a cadence in your business is predict creating this predictable pattern of, of making sure your business is on track and you're you're addressing issues as they go. Tim, I appreciate you carving out time to be here. That's Tim Redmond from RedmondGrowth.com. That's RedmondGrowth.com. He's a beautiful man, a great American. Tim Redmond, thank you for allowing me to interview you today, thank sir. Thank you, Clay. And we will talk appreciate to you later. You. Take care. Very good. Awesome. Right. If we go back eight years ago, think about the, the number of clients you had back then versus the number of clients you have now. As a percentage, what has been the growth over the past eight years, do you think? we got to well, inspire somebody out there who just well, doesn't have the time to listen okay, to their calls. Okay, so, Clay, it's, it's, it's like... I would go up and down from uh, about ten thousand dollars a month up to about forty thousand, but it's up and down roller coaster. And so now we've we've got it to where we're in excess of a hundred clients. 
That's awesome. And so I would have anywhere from five clients to 20 clients on my own with networking, but I had no control over it. I, I, I didn't, without the systems, you're going to be at the, you're going to be victimized by your own business. For the, somebody out there who struggles with math, if you, let's say that your average cl- number of clients was 30 and you go to 100, as a percentage, what is that? I, I have grown, I have doubled every year since working with you. So I've doubled in clients, I've doubled in revenue every year. It's a hundred percent growth every year I've worked with. Now so so I'm looking we've been good friends seven, eight years and I've got doubled five times. Which is just incredible. I mean the first time you do it, that's one thing, but when you do it repeatedly, yeah. I mean that's we're unbelievable. Work, we're working our blessed assurance off this year to double. We're planning on doubling again. We're incorporating new some 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 new things in there to really help us do it, but we are going to double again this year. I started coaching, but it would go up and down, Clay. That's when I came to you as I was going up and down, and I wanted to go up and up instead of up and down. And so that's when it needed a system. So creating a system is you have nailed down specific steps that you're going to take no matter how you feel, no matter the results, you lean into them and you do them regardless of what's happening. You lean into them and it will give you X number of leads. You follow up with those leads, turns into sales. Well, I tell you, you know, it, it's if you don't have a script and you don't have a system, then every day is a whole new creation. You're creating a, a lot of energy just to figure out what are you going to do. Right. And the best executives, Peter Drucker is a father of modern management. He said, the most effective executives make one decision a year. What you do is you make a decision, what is your system, and then you work like the Dickens to make sure you follow that system. And so that, that, that's really what it's all about. So with a script here, I, you know, I, we have a brand new gal that just came, came in working for us. She nailed down the script, and yep. she's been nailing down appointments. Usually, we try to get one appointment for every 100 calls. We make two to 300 calls a day per rep. Right. And she's been nailing down five and eight appointments a day. Somebody out there is having a hard time. script. What's, so she's making how many calls a day? She's making between two and 300 calls a day. Whoa. And our relationship is weird in that we, we do, um, if someone were to buy an Apple computer today, yeah. And uh, or, or let's say about a personal computer, a PC. The computer is made by, let's say, Dell. But then the software in the computer um, would be Microsoft, let's say, or Adobe or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I make I basically make the systems and uh, you're, you're like the computer and I'm like the software. It's kind of how I would describe our relationship. Yeah. Tim, uh, I want to ask you this. You and I reconnected. Um, and, uh, I think it was in the year 2000 and uh, what was it? Maybe 2010. Is that right? 2011, maybe? Or maybe, maybe further down the road. Maybe 2013? 2012. Okay, so 2012. And uh, at that time, I had I was five years removed from the, D, from the DJ business. And you were how many years removed from tax and accounting software? Uh, it was about 10, 11 years. We met. Um, how did we re-meet? What was the first interaction? There was some interaction where you and I first connected. I just remember that somehow... You and I went to Hideaway Pizza. But do you remember when we first reconnected? Yeah. Uh, well, we had that speaking thing that... Uh, oh, there uh, it was. So yeah. it was Victory Christian Center. I was yeah. speaking there. My name is Robert Redmond. I uh, actually first met Clay almost three years ago to the day. I don't know if he remembers it or not, but I wasn't working with him at the time. I asked to see him and just ask him some questions to help you know, direct my life, to get some mentorship. Uh, but I've been working with Clay for now just over a year. Uh, the role I play here is a business coach, uh, business consultant. I work with different businesses, implementing uh, best practice processes and systems that I have uh, learned here uh, by working with Clay. And the experience working here has, to put it real plainly, has been just life changing. Um, I have not only learned new things and uh, have gained new knowledge, uh, but, but I have gained a whole new mindset. Um, that I believe wherever I end up uh, will serve me well throughout the rest of my life. Since working with Clay, uh, I have learned so much. I mean, I would like to say almost everything about, about business in terms of the different categories. I haven't learned it all, 
Uh, but I've learned all about marketing. I've learned about advertising. I've learned about branding. I've learned how to create a sales process for organizations in any industry. I've learned how to sell. Uh, I've learned how to create repeatable systems and processes and uh, hold people accountable. Um, you know, how to hire people. It is, it's almost like every aspect of a business you can learn. I have learned um, a lot in, in those different categories. Uh, and then, again, the, the mindset that I've gained here um, has been huge. You know, uh, working here, uh, you, can't, you can't be a mediocre person. Um, you are uh, a call to a higher standard of, of excellence. And then as you're called to that standard here, you begin to see those outcomes in every area of your life, uh, that standard of excellence that, that you want to implement um, no matter what you're involved in. Uh, I would like to describe the other uh, people that, that work with Clay uh, are people that are going somewhere with their life. Uh, Marshall in, in the group interview uh, talks about how, uh, you know, the, the best fits for this organization are, are the people that, that are goal-oriented. So they're on their own trajectory, and we're on our own trajectory. And uh, the, the best fits are those people where there can be a, a mutually beneficial relationship, that as we pursue our goals uh, and we help the business pursue those goals, the uh, business helps us pursue our goals as well. Uh, and so I'd say people that are driven, people that want to make something of their lives, uh, people that are uh, goal-oriented, they're focused, uh, uh, and uh, they're committed to overcoming any adversity that may uh, come their way. Clay's passion for helping business uh, owners grow their businesses is it, it's, it's unique in that I don't know if there's anyone else's that can be as passionate. Um, you know, whenever a business starts uh, uh, working with Clay, uh, it, it's almost as like Clay is, is running that business in the sense that he has something at stake. Um, you know, he's just serving them. Uh, they're, they're, they're one of his clients, but it, it's as if he is actively involved in the business. Whenever they have a win, he's posting it all over his social media. He's shouting it across uh, the, the room here, here at Thrive. Um, you know, he's uh, sending people encouraging messages. He can kind of be that, that life coach and, and, and business coach in terms of being that uh, a motivator and that champion for uh, people's businesses. It's, 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 again, unique because there's no one else I've seen uh, get so excited about and passionate about other people's businesses. The kind of people that wouldn't like working with Clay are people that are satisfied with, with mediocrity, uh, people that uh, want to get through life by just doing enough, by just getting by, uh, people who are not looking to develop themselves, people who are not coachable, people who think that they know it all, and they're unwilling to change. Um, I would say those are the type of people. And in short, anyone that's content with mediocrity uh, would not like working with Clay. So if um, you're meeting Clay for the first time, the advice I'd give you is uh, definitely come ready to take tons of notes. Uh, every time Clay speaks, he uh, um, gives you a wealth of knowledge uh, that you don't want to miss. I remember the first time that I met Clay, I literally carried a notebook with me all around. I was looking at this notebook the other day, actually. I carried a notebook with me uh, all around, and I just took tons of notes. I filled the entire notebook in uh, about, about three or four months uh, just from being around Clay, following him, and, and, and learning from him. And then I would say, come, come coachable. Uh, uh, be, be open to uh, learning something new. Be open to challenging yourself. Uh, be open to um, learning and, and adjusting parts about you that, that uh, need to be adjusted. Oh, look at this cute baby. <laughs> what a great baby. <laughs> Quality baby. That's a healthy baby. Right there. Okay. <laughs> Thrive Nation, on today's show, I'm very excited for you to hear this success story about this wonderful couple that, Sean, I would describe the, 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 them as they are killing the game in, in the most nonviolent way possible. They're killing the game. Yeah. In the most nonviolent way possible. They are blowing up in, in, a, in a good way. Folks, I'm telling you, these folks are really growing their business. And what makes them great is they're really kind, hardworking, diligent people. And we're honored to serve them. We've got Jenny and Mike here joining us. Jenny and Mike, welcome to the Thrive Time Show. How are you two? Hi, thank you. Good. We're doing well. 
Okay, now I want to. I'll start with you, Jenny, because uh, uh, frankly, uh, Sean likes you more. No, I'm just kidding. So, uh, let's start with you. So, um, how did you first uh, discover us uh, and the business coaching that that we provide? Um, so I was listening to different podcasts about business. I, I was starting up our business. Um, and so you were the first one to pop up on, on our podcast on Apple. I think Apple is what I was on. And so I started listening to you. I got on your website and I was just a little girl starting a business. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to ask this guy to be my coach. And I don't think I'm going to get a shot, but sure enough, within a week, you called me. Now, who is this cute, cute child here? But Micah, who, who is this cute kid here? Uh, Lennon Rose. She is about to be 10 months old. I hate to do this to you, but can you kind of hold up the baby to the camera a little bit? <laughs> this is probably, oh, look at this cute baby. <laughs> what a great baby. <laughs> Quality baby. That's a healthy baby. Okay. So, so Mike, can you tell us what's the name of your, your website there? I think people want to look you up and verify your real people that don't just happen to have a cute baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> our website is newconcept.healthcare newconcept.healthcare. So newconcept.healthcare. Let me pull it up right now, folks, so we can all verify that they're, they're not just a couple who's taken advantage of the cute baby they have to get <laughs> podcast here. This is a real couple. Okay, so I'm pulling it up here. So this is the website. It's newconcept.healthcare. And can you tell our listeners, what services do you guys provide at newconcept.healthcare? So we offer more functional medicine. So we offer IV therapies. Um, we offer hormone replacement therapies. We also do acute care. We do pretty much everything, but we're very much alternative. Um, so we believe in medical freedom and um, that's what we offer. And uh, you guys, you, you reached out. Uh, do you remember that initial consultation there? Do you remember, uh, Mike, that initial consultation? Uh, did you, do you remember what that was like? Uh, yeah, it was actually pretty overwhelming that we were starting this business with absolutely nothing, and we had the opportunity to work with Five Time Chef. Well, well, you know, the, the one thing I, I always try to do is, you know, my father, um, great guy, may he rest in peace, uh, he worked his tail off like so many people do, and there was no real economic um, re result that was achieved from it. There wasn't any, you know, he had the college degree. He's working two jobs. I remember he's late thirties. He's working at Domino's, delivering pizzas, working at Quick Trip. He worked at furniture stores, and I always try to look at every new client we have as though I'm talking to my dad. You know, because like, what would what what would my dad, you know, it, it, what could he have learned at the age of 37 that could have changed the financial trajectory of his life? You know, and I try to look at it that way. And uh, um, so you guys, we, I paired you up with Sean. You've been working with Sean, I believe, Sean, since uh, October of 2020. Is that correct, Sean? I think that's when they started their business. It wasn't until about oh, April of 2021 April, when we actually yeah. got going. So yeah. April yeah. of 2021. And at that point, uh, from, from that point to now, uh, Sean, how much of growth have you guys achieved from 2021 to, to now? Do you, do you know that number? Yeah. I mean, the, we're sitting at 2023 revenues were 821,000 and they're in October of 2020. Like they, they only had a few months, but yeah. they made about 95,000 by the end of 2020 and then we grew uh significantly that first year to about 375 percent to 588,000, and we continued to grow there ever since all the way up to where we're, we're getting close to the million dollar mark at this point here just like three years in jenny how would you describe the growth have you, would you say you've, you've doubled or are you five times larger how would you describe that Oh, no, I definitely feel the growth. There's There's been some growing pains and you guys have helped us through that too. Um, so it's been it's been amazing. It's been amazing to, to help people because that's what I'm passionate about. And um, you guys have really helped us expand and, and tell people what we're about. So step one here, we, we did, we do, we, do this all, we do this with all the clients. I'm gonna walk people through the steps. We really needed to nail down your branding. Um, I, and that's a big thing because, you know, uh, branding is to uh, uh, humans what, clothing is. So as an example, you know, you wake up today, folks, if, if you run around and you're streaking through life, you're probably not going to get a lot of conversations started. Um, so we all have to be intentional about, you know, what are we going to wear? Are we going to wear a tie? Are we going to wear a polo? Are we going to do makeup? Are we not? So people, they judge us based on our appearance. And so we really had to get a website built. We had to optimize the online brand. Um, Jenny, how, we, we, we do all, it all included for our clients. So we don't refer you to another vendor. We do it all. Can you talk about the impact that's that, that that has made on the business? Oh, for sure. Um, just the the website itself, it looks it looks so great. We would have never been able to make it look that great. Um, the way y'all optimize everything and um, keep us, you know, with Google, um, just 
you know, where people search us and that we're the first people that come up. Um, and that's actually how we've established our business and started offering some of the things that we offer is because of the tags that we have. Um, I didn't originally start off as doing IV therapy, but due to people Googling, you know, uh, healthcare functional medicine, I had three phone calls in a week that said, hey, do you offer IV therapy? And it was very interesting. And I was like, well, no, but I can. And so it was because of you guys that that kind of snowballed and took effect. So, yeah, there's a lot that you guys have done for us. Now, uh, Sean, we're working with uh, these these wonderful clients here. Mm -hmm. I'll pick on Mike here. You know, you always say great things about Mike and Jenny. You're always what makes them good to work with? Because I, I want to make sure for anybody out there, if you go to thrivetimeshow.com, I consent consistently offer a free 13 point assessment. I've been doing that since 2005. I do it without reservation. There's no obligation, but there's usually about one to two knuckleheads a week that will fill out the form and probably 20 really great people that fill out the form. And then we only take on 160 clients. And so I don't want anyone to waste their time. What makes a uh, Mike so, so great to work with? Well, Clay, I mean, you, when I first started coaching, you taught me about these, you know, these two types of business owners, there's the happy hopers out there, and then there's the diligent doers. And I think these guys are a great example of the diligent doer. They continually apply effort to work on their business, not just in their business. They consistently show up to their meetings. They track all of the critical numbers of their business, and they are, they're aware of what's going on with all of their employees. They're paying attention to all the little things going on. They're keeping all the plates spinning, and they ask great questions. They actually really do um, make a great effort consistently to apply our systems and help their business grow. And it's been working. So step one, we get the branding nailed down. That's the website, the print pieces, the logos, the business cards. But then you have to develop that online reputation. Now, that could be a tough thing to do, uh, Jenny. And I'll just, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not, this isn't a backhanded compliment. I'm just saying, but for people that are humble and very kind, of which I would put Jenny in that category, sometimes asking for reviews is more difficult because you almost feel like you're self-promoting. Um, <laughs> I've never had this conversation with you, um, but when you w w has that been difficult for you to ask people to give you uh, video reviews and uh, Google reviews after you provided the service, or was that easy for you to do? It was not. It's not easy. It still isn't easy. <laughs> okay. Um, it is. It's it's difficult because you you feel like you're begging for something, even though you know you did the right thing. Yeah. Um, so it, it is. It's difficult for me. It's just my personality type. But we we get it done anyways. Mm -hmm. I'll find this for the diligent, kind customers we work with. It's very uh, difficult sometimes to ask for those objective reviews from real customers. And I find that from my uh, my my clients I've worked with that are sort of like self described barbarians. I had a guy years ago I worked with. He's a I won't mention his name or his industry, but he I'll just say he's obsessed with physical fitness. And he told me he says I'm kind of a business barbarian. You tell me what to do, and I will slay the dragons. And I'm like okay. You need to get Google reviews from everybody you've ever you know, worked with. And he's like, oh, I'm on it. And this guy's just shamelessly calling through his phone and just lighting people up going, give me a review. Come on, give me a review. Why would you not give me a review? I'm like, go ahead, dial it down a little bit. Uh, you know. So again, you guys are, are humble, diligent doers. You're the ideal person here. So I appreciate you sharing that. The next thing we had to do is we had to create a no-brainer. Now, a no-brainer is an offer so good, so amazing that people simply cannot say uh, no to it. Now, I'm gonna, uh, I am gonna—I won't mention the name of the company, but I worked years ago, and I still work with this company. They're a medical company. They're doing well now. And for whatever reason, they put on their website, first initial consult, 497. And he went to one of these like borderline spiritual motivational conference things where Jesus isn't described, but they, they kind of talk about metaphysical alignment and getting your woo saw, getting in your groove alignment, no friction. <laughs> and I, and he came back and he's like, Clay, I believe in the seventh, the number of completion. I go, I, I, I agree. He says four is the number that's urgent. I'm like, okay, not, and I go, what? And he's like, <laughs> I don't, I don't want tire kickers. So I'm going to do 497 for my first consult. That way I don't deal with the tire kickers. And I'm like, doc, I love you so much. You're a doctor. I love it. You don't have any customers. though. That's why you came to me. You don't have any customers. So why don't you do a first free consult? Say, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to kick, I'm going to kick out Sean, the tire kicker. So I'm Sean, sure I'm sure you've never seen this with a client. Oh, never. And so <laughs> now what makes it worse is his wife also went to the metaphysical alignment, motivational jackassery festival. And she was like, 497 <laughs> is the number. I had a dream about it. I'm like, yeah, because you probably talked about it all weekend. You probably are subconsciously thinking about it. You're probably creating a neural pathway related to 497. And so anyway, after about a year, he finally says, okay, I came to your conference and I saw a person that did the first consult for a dollar. I'm going to go with that. And now his business is blowing up. 
Uh, could you talk about your no-brainer, your first consult for a dollar? How has that helped you having that no-brainer offer? Yeah, so it gets people in. And so when we get people in, we know that we're doing a good job and we know that um, we're trustworthy and and our health care is is superior to most. So just getting people in for that dollar, because a lot of people are, you know, they're nervous about going to the doctor or they don't trust healthcare system. And so they know that they can come in. They're only going to spend a dollar. They can figure out whether or not they trust us, figure out whether or not we're the place for them. And we know 100 percent of the time we will be. Um, so it's really helped us just get people in and get people to trust us more. Now, once somebody fills out the form, folks, again, there's a linear pathway here. I'm trying to give you a visual here. So you establish your revenue goals. You figure out your numbers to break even. You figure out how many hours a week you're willing to work. Even though you have a cute baby, you got to figure out how you're going to get it done. The step number four is you define your unique value proposition. What makes you unique? That's something you and Sean have worked on together. You improve your branding. Now you're coming in contact with humans. Business is a contact sport. I love this part. That's when you start marketing. You launch your marketing. You have your online ads. You're, you optimize your website. You begin to come up top in the search results. You start to get leads. Do you remember what it was, what it was like, Jenny, when you first got your first online lead? Do you remember the, the first one where you're like, it's working? <laughs> Do you remember that moment? Yeah, it was almost like we wanted to, well, we did celebrate because it finally had happened. And then as soon as the first one came in, the second one came in. And like I said, it was it was almost a growing pain experience. We had so many leads so fast. Um, so it was great. And I, we still celebrate every lead that we get. Now, Mike, the next step is you have to make sales scripts. Uh, we, re we recommend to every client that the calls are recorded for quality assurance. You have a sales script, call, the calls are recorded for quality assurance, you have a one sheet that tracks your pricing. You have pre-written emails. You begin tracking. Sean's always bragging about you guys with tracking. Uh, Mike, how has it helped to have tracking in place where you can see, you know, how, how does that help you? Well, it's really a good benefit because, you know, at the end of the week, you know what your income was. You know what your leads was. So wherever we're lacking in, we can quickly adjust and make that adjustment to make it work for the next week. Now, when you if you don't have tracking, uh, folks, th this is a true story. It's kind of a, a sad story. So I'll I'll speak in generality, Sean. I talked to a guy the other day. This is a terrible story. Mm. Longtime client, and he got motivated. He he set up a trade show. He didn't tell me he's doing it. It's fine. You don't have to tell me. But he set up a trade show. I think he was going to try to surprise me with the fruit, of the trade show. <laughs> so he set up the trade show, and uh, he gets on the call. His energy's kind of off, and I'm like, "Are you okay? Yeah, doing fine. What what's wrong? I just I don't know." I'm like, your lead sheet, we're getting, you know, 10 to 15 leads a week. It's very consistent. Revenue looks good. He's like, yeah, I'm in a tight spot. We are in a tight spot. Why are you in a tight spot? He says, I did a trade show. You did a trade show? Yeah, I got roped into four. I did a thing where you get the billboard, you get the trade show, you get the magazine ad. And I did the trade show and we got no leads. And I go, what kind of trade show did you do? And he says, well, I went to the whatever trade show. And Sean, what I find is that there's the emotional excitement about being on the billboard, mm -hmm. being on the magazine cover. Be you know, and he got called by, by one of these kind of scam. I, I call it a scam ochery or jackassery. Yeah, they call you and they go, boop, 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 boop. Hey, is this Sean? Mm, yeah, this is Sean. Sean, yeah, I we noticed that you have an incredible healthcare company and we want to uh honor you by giving you the yada yada uh, uh, of the region award. It's the yada yada, it's a regional, it's a prestigious award. Um, would we like to meet with you? Is, oh, can we meet with you? Yeah. So now I meet here. Now, Sean, uh, again, I'm not we're on the phone, but I still like the phone voice here. So now, now Sean, uh, so because we're so honored, you know, we're we're inviting you to a plated dinner to honor your uh, just your your honor, your honoredness, your greatness, your humbleness. Oh. And uh it's gonna be a thousand dollars a plate, you know, for you and your wife. And did you want four seats or eight? Because most people do eight. Oh, um, I guess just four, four, four. Yeah, and that, that, that does include a glossy magazine uh, feature in, uh, we'll just call it like Missouri local top doctor jackassery. It's a great magazine. Oh. And you're also on the, you'll be on a billboard. We've teamed up with the billboard. It rotates through. You're going to see oh, wow. your, oh, hey, don't get too excited. Um, and just because we're honored, we're not, you know, again, we're just honored now. Uh, did you want to do the four, four tickets? Or? Yeah, that, yeah, absolutely. Now the way it works is it's going to be a four payments of 4,000 for a total of 16,000. Uh, and that's, no, I'm serious. And now they're in the <laughs> trade shows and he's going to the trade show and there ain't nobody there. Uh, there is nobody there uh, you mean, to be technical. Nobody was at this trade show. I mean, Ooh. everybody was not at the trade show. <laughs> so, 
He's I got photos of like him and his wife and his team in an empty booth. And he's got a magazine and no leads are coming. And he was so excited to tell me. Um, I'm sure you've never encountered this sort of thing, uh, Virginia. Have you, you know, Jenny, have you ever seen a situation where that sort of shamakery advertising has been entered into your world in some capacity? I've been there. I've been exactly where what you're talking about. And I've mm. set up everything and paid employees. And I felt like I was nothing more than a free pin show. The only people that were there were people looking for free pins. <laughs> oh, I know. And it feels terrible. And then you kind of have to sell it to yourself all day. <laughs> guys, guys, we're getting our name out there. Sean, can you pass the megaphone back there? Uh, right, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I tell people, if you want to get your name out there, what you do is you just run outside and say, <laughs> Right, come visit New Concept Healthcare. And, and people go, why are you yelling at me? I'm trying to shop for my groceries. New Concept Healthcare. <laughs> Name out there. Getting <laughs> like, is this effective? It's of course it's effective. I'm getting my name out there. Yeah. <laughs> and then that leads to buying frisbees, branded frisbees, right. Uzis. You know what I'm saying? Branded pins. Yes. yes. I mean, all of a yes. sudden, you you buy these things. Sean, you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So oh, now yeah. we have to do, and I'm going to show you. This is kind of the back end of one of my uh, one of my companies called Elephant in the Room. And you do a search for eitrlounge.com. Uh, and then you go to forward slash staff. I'm not going to give you the password, folks, but you log in. And these are all the systems needed to run the haircut chain. Now, mm -hmm. um, one thing I thought was very interesting is uh, Truth Social, President Trump's uh, the social media platform. The other day they were disclosing, Newsweek was disclosing um, the revenue of it. Oh, yeah. And I just want people to know this because I think, I, and I and just full disclosure, I'm a very conservative person, uh, but I just want people to see this. This is just something to look at. Truth Social, um, they declared in their filing that they did $3.3 .3 million of revenue mm -hmm. and had $49 million of losses, which, by the way, that's very normal for a tech startup company. And their users uh, are going up. And they're having an app. There's like a reaction in the marketplace. People are actually putting more money in. They're investing. The stock price is going up. But I don't know anybody that I've met in my life. But I've never, I've never, I've never been a client that can afford to bring in 3.3 million and lose 49 million. You know, yeah. so like for my haircut chain, we have five locations. We bring in more than 3.3 million. And this just in, we don't spend 49 million, you know, mm. so we have to, we, we call it a lean startup. You got to keep that thing lean. And so when you go to EITRLounge.com forward slash staff, every document needed to manage the business is, is here. So the opening checklist for the manager, you click here, boom, this is what the manager has to do to start the day. Everything is documented. And that's kind of where we're at right now um, with uh, Jenny and Mike's business. We're in the process of building all those checklists. Yeah. Uh, Sean, what kind of checklist have you built so far? Oh, man, we have a whole page. Um, uh, their staff page is pretty built out. We're really getting there. I think more right now it's it's getting – correct me if I'm wrong. We need some managers in there so we can free you guys up from the business. And so we have a lot of the, mm. the worker-level systems. We're just now working on more of how do we get those manager-level systems and find those high-quality managers. Now, let me give Jenny a little uh, mentor moment here. This will be helpful for you. Um I'm going to hop on a flight in about two and a half hours, three hours to go to Denver, right? And uh, I got to go to Denver to meet with the founder of uh, OxyFresh.com. This is a brand we've worked with and helped them to grow to 550 locations now, 550 locations, okay? And if you type in carpet cleaning quotes, we're the world's highest rated and most reviewed company in the world, in the world, Okay. 274,000 reviews. We've been holding this idea in our mind for 15 consecutive years. I've been working on this, Sean, before I met you. We just were grinding, okay? Yeah. And the biggest challenge that the locations have is managers, finding a good manager. And I tell people this, and it, it, it never goes over well, but hopefully eventually it will. I'll, I'll keep mm -hmm. refi refining it, refining the idea. The kind of person that enjoys conflict but also likes people is a good manager. Let me try that again. The kind of person that enjoys conflict, but also likes people is a good manager. Mm -hmm. And I have found it's not so much trainable as it's findable. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as an example, where we're getting ready to head out to Denver, Sean, you know, my personality type, and yeah. you know that I have to pack all this stuff to get ready to go. You saw my suitcase out there. Yep. <laughs> How many times do you think I've followed up with the people involved in the trip so far before leaving? Oh man, it's it's probably on your to do list, and you've checked it off like probably at least five times today. I would think. And what kind of things do you think I might have put on my checklist to travel to Denver? Uh, first off, just making sure that the timing is working, making sure that you have all the stuff that you need, making sure that you have double of the stuff that you need in case something gets broken. 
um, making sure that the people who who are there know you're coming and when you're going to be there and Keep what to going. expect from what, you. What, do you think I'm checking a bag? Oh yeah, you're probably not checking a bag. There it is. Get lost. All no. right. No. And am I am I get? You think I'm catching a flight a lot earlier than I need to be there? Way earlier. Yeah. If I'm having yeah. a meeting tomorrow, which I am, I'm leaving today at twelve thirty. Yeah. So this is, is but like, <laughs> uh, that's the sort of paranoia that makes management possible. So yeah. I have literally called. I said, all right, I'm getting on the twelve thirty flight. Uh, we're meeting tomorrow. I should be in by like four o'clock Denver time. Our meetings tomorrow. If if that flight gets delayed and the next one gets delayed and the next one, I'll still be there. I've got backup phone chargers. I have a rule. Everybody going with me. You cannot check a bag. I want to check a bag. Can't check a bag. Why? Because it could get lost. Uh, this is real. I'm not I, every I am completely paranoid. And that is the the paranoia is what makes the businesses run. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. asked my staff every day, guys, elephant in the room. Did you guys get a, a review? And they say, well, yeah, we, we got a review. You asked me 10 minutes ago. Okay, well, I'll talk to you in four minutes. You heard me say that. I'll say, yeah. I'll talk to you in five minutes. Yeah. And I'll do it. And it's a follow-up of, because I have to make sure that the checklists are being followed. The reviews are being followed. We're, we're a licensed business. People don't know that. Hair care, um, you're licensed by the state. So we have certain cleanliness standards. We could have random people from the state show up. So we got checklists. And I follow up. And it doesn't bother me. To follow up with the same adult who's in their 40s six times within a 50 minute span of time, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But most people, that bothers them. Yeah. And so, have you found that, Jenny, that a lot of people don't like to follow up? Have you found that, or is that just something unique to me? Um, I found that they don't like to follow up. No, people don't like to follow up. It's a almost like an awkward communication thing not um, that people will try to avoid. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's not necessarily that you're being mean or any type of way, but that's, I feel like that's probably the way that we feel when we continuously follow up, like we're having to step on people's toes, but really we're not, we're just getting the job. In my done. mentorship moment for you is it's probably the same feeling you have when you ask for reviews. Mm. Yeah. It's probably yeah. the same. So, <laughs> and, I, and I'm just saying, and then, and if, if you, uh, Mike, did you ever play football or a sport of some kind? Yeah. I used to play soccer. Okay. Soccer. So like when you, what, what position did you play? Uh, goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Okay. So is a goal. This is a great, great example. I didn't know you were a goalkeeper, but when you're a goalkeeper and someone's kicking that ball at you fast, I mean, just the ball's coming in there. I mean, people can really kick a soccer ball fast. Yeah. There are certain people that want to be a goalkeeper, but they kind of avoid the ball. They try to hide from it. They flinch. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah. you actually would lunge into it. Am I correct? Right. I mean, you're aggressive, right? I mean, you're like you had, for some reason you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? I enjoyed getting hundred miles an hour. Fastball. <laughs> but did you ever see somebody who tried to be a goalie? I'm not looking for a name here, but somebody who would kind of hide from the ball? Yeah. This is the same thing for management. Like as a manager, you have to want, like you have to sort of seek out conflict, but like people. So I, I'll say things like, okay, it's eight o'clock. I need to make sure you put out the flags in front of the elephant in the room store today, Mr. Manager. Put out the flags that draw the attention by the road. Put out the flags. And uh, I'm going to call you in 10 minutes to follow up. Call them in 10 minutes. Are the flags up? Can you send me a picture? They're like, do you not trust me? Absolutely not. I trust nobody. <laughs> Go ahead and send him. And then I'll call him back 30 minutes later. Hey, did you get Google reviews? Yeah, we got one Google review. You know, the quote is 10. Yeah, I'll call you back in two minutes. You know, call him back. Hey, did you get a review? It's been two minutes. I know. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what. I'll call you back in an hour. And I, I, my whole day is just following up. And then over time, the culture happens where people go, he's going to follow up. And now the people that <laughs> like the follow up like to work there and it's become a great thing. And that's where we're kind of at right now, I think, is we're getting into the follow up phase. Do you have call recording in place there, Mike? Are you, do you have the call recording for quality assurance yeah. installed yet? Yes, we do. And are you learning some things? Yes. It is very hard to train people on call, on recording <laughs> scripts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's something we got to do. Now we're just going through the workflow. And then the wowing the customers. What Sean is saying is that your patients are consistently wowed. Now, I don't know if that's because Sean is your hype man or if that's a real thing, but it seems like people are actually um, wowing. They're being wowed right now. People, when they come in, this is, if you look at the workflow, they buy something right here. We have to wow them. You've got to create that wow moment. Mm -hmm. And again, if you want to download this diagram, folks, just go to thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire, thrivetimeshow.com forward slash millionaire. You can download it from my newest book called A Millionaire's Guide to Become Becoming Sustainably Rich. You got to create that wow moment. I mean, you, amidst the checklists and the tracking at some point here, you've got to create a moment that wows people where they go, wow. So I'm trying to get everybody's creative juices flowing here. So if you have a restaurant, I work with a restaurant in Florida right now, a great restaurant. They say, Welcome in. Is it your first time? They say, yeah, it's my first time. Oh, well, hey, you get free appetizers on us today and one free adult beverage. Welcome in. 
And that every time it's that, wow. And then mm -hmm. when you come back later and ask for a review or, hey, what entree do you want? Guess what? People become generous with how they buy. Um, another example, I work with an auto auction. The auto auction says your first time that you buy from the auto auction, you only have to pay a dollar more than the actual cost of the vehicle just to wow people to get that going um i happen to work with a carpet cleaning business carpet cleaning business and what they do is they say hey the first time we clean your carpet will beat any competitor's price and it will be at least half off of our normal price and they go okay great you got to have that wow moment what are you guys doing jenny to wow your customers there well, um, there are things that we do. Um, we will oftentimes like give samples of certain things because we know they work. We yep. um, we have a lot of supplement sales that we do. Um, again, the dollar consult is a wow moment because we will spend some, you know, 10 to 15 minutes explaining how we're different. Um, and I feel like they're wowed because of that. Um, also, our services are so much different. We spend time in the room with our patients. We listen to them. They're not just a number. Um, and a lot of times people have never experienced that. So um, there's a lot of wow moments, I think, for all of our patients. <clears throat> now, I understand that 59% of your customers are now from word of mouth. Is that accurate? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah, well, and with the customer acquisitions cost too, I've heard you say this before, Clay, that if you're if you're advertising and you're doing a good job wowing at the same time, they compound each other and you'll end up having two to three word of mouth referrals from those patients that are wowed for every one lead you have from advertising. We measured and tracked that they had this last year for every dollar they spent on advertising, they were able to bring back in $4 and 61 cents. So that's a 461% return on their marketing investment. It's incredible stuff. And the great news is as we build these systems, if you guys ever wanted to franchise or license or open up multiple locations, if done properly, you should be able to scale it. It should be very repeatable, very duplicatable. Um, other things you guys have done, you've implemented a database to keep track of your customers, you're gathering objective video reviews. You guys are really checking all the boxes. I'd like for you, if you can, uh, uh, Jenny here, to give a, a word of encouragement for any of our listeners out there that are a little bit on the fence right now and they're going, you know, I have thought about scheduling a, a free consultation, but I I, I don't know. I, I hear it's 1700 a month. and it's. Well, can you maybe explain your thoughts, what you'd say to anybody who's a friend of yours or family that asks you about the, the value about the business consulting? Oh, well, I would say that the $1,700 a month is an excuse not to have someone to mentor you. Um, it's kind of like being in a gym when you need a trainer. Um, we're not always perfect and business owning is not easy and you need a mentor. Um, I've never missed the $1,700 a month, even when I was only six months in when we started um, with you guys, I've never, I've never even considered it a loss. It was, it was scary at first to, to make that, but that wasn't an excuse. I knew I needed someone to guide me through this. And you guys have guided us through this, through the entire thing, through employees, through income, through spending, through all of it. And we come through so, so many problems. There are a lot of problems that are established when you have a business. I mean, you become very overwhelmed very fast and you need somebody that you can call who's successful, who's been there that says, you're not crazy. This happens to all of us. Here's what you do about it. It's been the best decision that we've made. <clears throat> Final question I have here for you, as far as um, having a turn, like a one-stop shop. Years ago, I hired a business consultant who was great. And he would say things like, and I'm not ripping him. I'm just telling you what would happen. He would say, Clay, you got to work on your business and not in it. I'm going, that's true. He goes, you got to delegate to elevate. That's true. Clay, your website is not optimized. And I'm going, this is great. Fresh perspective. I go, Bruce, could you help me optimize? No, I don't optimize. <laughs> could you help me work on it? No. Could you help me make a checklist? No. Do you make, do you help me with the print pieces that I need to make? No. Can you make a video? No. Do you help me with my online ads? No. Clay. And he would used to, he was kind of an Eastern, he's an Eastern, uh, Northeastern American guy. And he used to say, Clay baby, let me tell you what. I I don't I don't I don't make print pieces. What am I a print piece guy? I'm not a web guy. We know what I am. I'm a work on the business guy. You got to find a good web guy. So every meeting we would have would result in me having to find another vendor to yeah. pay another eight thousand dollars to to build the website, four four thousand to make the video, five thousand to do. So every time he would give a recommendation, it would lead to another cost. Can you maybe explain the value of having a flat monthly fee? Yeah, I don't have to ever worry about it. Like it's, I know if I need the website updated, it's a text away. I know if I'm having trouble with an employee, it's a text away. I know if I have need financial advice, it's a text away. Um, and again, we meet every single week and all our questions are answered and we're held accountable to what we need to be held accountable for. So it really works for us.
Jenny and Mike, thank you guys for your time so much. I really do value your time. I appreciate you guys being here today. And on part two of today's show, we're going to tee up another success story because we want people to know it is possible, despite the financial jack or jackassery plaguing our nation right now, it is possible to become successful, and you guys are a living example of it. Thank you guys for bringing your baby on the show. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. I'm Rachel with Tip Top Canine, and we just want to give a huge thank you to Clay and Vanessa Clark. Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys. We appreciate you and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house. Right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See? It's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing. And this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grossed 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the highest and most reviewed business workshops on the planet. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, but I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. If we go back eight years ago, Think about the, the number of clients you had back then versus the number of clients you have now. As a percentage, what has been the growth over the past eight years, do you think? we got to well, inspire somebody out there who just well, doesn't have the time to listen okay, to their calls. Okay, so, Clay, it's, it's, it's like I would go up and down from uh, about $10,000 a month up to about $40,000, but it's up and down roller coaster. And so now we've, we've got it to where we're in excess of 100 clients. 
That's awesome. And so I would have anywhere from five clients to 20 clients on my own with networking, but I had no control over it. I, I, I didn't, without the systems, you're going to be at the, you're going to be victimized by your own business. For the, somebody out there who struggles with math, if you, let's say that your average cl- number of clients was 30 and you go to 100, as a percentage, what is that? I, I have grown, I have doubled every year since working with you. So I've doubled in clients, I've doubled in revenue every year. It's a hundred percent growth every year I've worked with. now. So, so I'm looking, we've been good friends, seven, eight years, and I've got doubled five times, which is just incredible. I mean, the first time you do it, that's one thing, but when you do it repeatedly, yeah. I mean, that's we're unbelievable. Work, we're working our blessed assurance off this year to double. We're planning on doubling again. We're incorporating new, some, some, some new things in there to really help us do it. But we are going to double again this year. I started coaching, but it would go up and down, Clay. That's when I came to you as I was going up and down, and I wanted to go up and up instead of up and down. And so that's when it needed a system. So creating a system is... You have nailed down specific steps that you're going to take no matter how you feel, no matter the results. You lean into them and you do them regardless of what's happening. You lean into them and it will give you X number of leads. You follow up with those leads, turns into sales. Well, I tell you, you know, it's if you don't have a script and you don't have a system, then every day is a whole new creation. You're creating a, a lot of energy just to figure out what are you going to do. Right. And the best executives, Peter Drucker is a father of modern management. He said, the most effective executives make one decision a year. What you do is you make a decision, what is your system, and then you work like the Dickens to make sure you follow that system. And so that, that, that's really what it's all about. So with a script here, I, you know, I, we have a brand new gal that just came, came in working for us. She nailed down the script, and yep. she's been nailing down appointments. Usually, we try to get one appointment for every 100 calls. We make two to 300 calls a day per rep. Right. And she's been nailing down five and eight appointments a day. Somebody out there is having a hard time. script. What's, so she's making how many calls a day? She's making between two and 300 calls a day. Whoa. And our relationship is weird in that we, we do, um, if someone were to buy an Apple computer today, yeah, and uh, or, or let's say you bought a personal computer, a PC. The computer is made by, let's say, Dell. But then the software in the computer um, would be Microsoft, let's say, or Adobe or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, make, I basically make the systems, and uh, you're, you're like the computer and I'm like the software. It's kind of how I would describe our relationship. Yeah. Tim, uh, I want to ask you this. You and I reconnected, um, and, uh, I think it was in the year 2000 and, uh, what was it, maybe 2010? Is that right? 2011, maybe? Or maybe further down the road. Maybe 2013? 2012. Okay, so 2012. And uh, at that time, I had I was five years removed from the, D, from the DJ business. And you were how many years removed from tax and accounting software? Uh, it was about 10, 11 years. We met. Um, how did we re-meet? What was the first interaction? There was some interaction where you and I first connected. I just remember that somehow... You and I went to Hideaway Pizza. But do you remember when we first reconnected? Yeah. Uh, well, we had that speaking thing that... Uh, oh, there uh, it was. So yeah. it's Victory Christian Center. I was yeah. speaking there. My name is Robert Redmond. I uh, actually first met Clay almost three years ago to the day. I don't know if he remembers it or not, but I wasn't working with him at the time. I asked to see him and just ask him some questions to help you know, direct my life, to get some mentorship. Uh, but I've been working with Clay for now just over a year. Uh, the role I play here is a business coach, uh, business consultant. I work with different businesses, implementing uh, best practice processes and systems that I have uh, learned here uh, by working with Clay. And the experience working here has, to put it real plainly, has been just life changing. Um, I have not only learned new things and have gained new knowledge, uh, but, but I have gained a whole new mindset. Um, that I believe wherever I end up uh, will serve me well throughout the rest of my life. Since working with Clay, uh, I have learned so much. I mean, I would like to say almost everything about, about business in terms of the different categories. I haven't learned it all, 
uh, but I've learned all about marketing. I've learned about advertising. I've learned about branding. I've learned how to create a sales process for organizations in any industry. I've learned how to sell. Uh, I've learned how to create repeatable systems and processes and uh, hold people accountable. Um, you know, how to hire people. It is, it's almost like every aspect of a business you can learn. I have learned um, a lot in, in those different categories. Uh, and then, again, the, the mindset that I've gained here um, has been huge. You know, uh, working here, uh, you, can't, you, you can't be a mediocre person. Um, you are uh, a call to a higher standard of, of excellence. And then as you're called to that standard here, you begin to see those outcomes in every area of your life, uh, that standard of excellence that, that you want to implement um, no matter what you're involved in. Uh, I would like to describe the other uh, people that, that work with Clay uh, are people that are going somewhere with their life. Uh, Marshall in, in the group interview uh, talks about how, uh, you know, the, the best fits for this organization are, are the people that, that are goal-oriented. So they're on their own trajectory, and we're on our own trajectory. And uh, the, the best fits are those people where there can be a, a mutually beneficial relationship, that as we pursue our goals uh, and we help the business pursue those goals, the uh, business helps us pursue our goals as well. Uh, and so I'd say people that are driven, people that want to make something of their lives, uh, people that are uh, goal-oriented, they're focused, uh, uh, and uh, they're committed to overcoming any adversity that may uh, come their way. Clay's passion for helping business uh, owners grow their businesses is it's, it's unique in that I don't know if there's anyone else's that can be as passionate. Um, you know, whenever a business starts uh, uh, working with Clay, uh, it, it's almost as like Clay is, is running that business in the sense that he has something at stake. Um, you know, he's just serving them. Uh, they're, they're, they're one of his clients, but it, it's as if he is actively involved in the business. Whenever they have a win, he's posting it all over his social media. He's shouting it across uh, the, the room here, here at Thrive. Um, you know, he's uh, sending people encouraging messages. He can kind of be that, that life coach and, and, and business coach in terms of being that uh, a motivator and that champion for uh, people's businesses. It's, 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 again, unique because there's no one else I've seen uh, get so excited about and passionate about other people's businesses. The kind of people that wouldn't like working with Clay are people that are satisfied with, with mediocrity, uh, people that uh, want to get th through life by just doing enough, by just getting by, uh, people who are not looking to develop themselves, people who are not coachable, people who think that they know it all, and they're unwilling to change. Um, I would say those are the type of people, and in short, anyone that's content with mediocrity uh, would not like working with Clay. So if, if um, you're meeting Clay for the first time, the advice I'd give you is uh, definitely come ready to take tons of notes. Uh, every time Clay speaks, he uh, um, gives you a wealth of knowledge uh, that you don't wanna miss. I remember the first time that I met Clay, I literally carried a notebook with me all around. I was looking at this notebook the other day, actually. I carried a notebook with me uh, all around, and I just took tons of notes. I filled the entire notebook in uh, about, about three or four months, uh, just from being around Clay, following him, and, and, and learning from him. And then I would say, come, come coachable. Uh, uh, be, be open to uh, learning something new. Be open to challenging yourself. Uh, be open to um, learning and, and adjusting parts about you that, that uh, need to be adjusted.